God. Hey, come on, come. I was gonna ask, what did you say to him in between round one that fired you him up so much? You, after the se after the end of the first round, at the start of the second, looked like you wanted to run through a wall. What did he say to you? He's my little brother, so I pushed him a little bit. Like, hey, you know, you did so much, we trained so hard, and you know for who you're doing this, everything. So that pumps him up, and he went to the second round and finished him really good, really technical and super clean. And we pra practiced this so many times. I just remembered him, like, hey, we did this so many times. It's like, for you, it's nothing, like, it's nothing special. So just do whatever you're gonna do, and whatever we did the last 10 weeks, and yeah, it he also remembered him that he is with him because I was translating what he said in uh, on German, and I know uh, the feeling between brothers. He remembered him. He said, "Nasrat, I'm with you," and I think that had a, a big, big effect on Nasrat. He and I saw you grab the towel out of George's hand. To, was his technique not good at cornering that? I saw you started whipping it like your life depending on it. <laughs> George was kind of being on it. I, I was really excited, that's why. Nervous. I was really nervous, so that's why I took it and I, yeah. Okay, guys. Next question. I <laughs> Somebody else? All right, I got so, You said you're not going to call anyone out, but uh, is there a time frame for when you want to come back? What are you looking for down the line? I don't call any specific names. I was supposed to fight John McDessy, so if we can reschedule this as soon as possible, this unfinished business and Sean, send me the contract. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to take rest. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So you and Faraz, like when you after the fight, you were kind of grappling with him, playing around. But how close is your relationship with Faraz? How big of an influence is he on your career? First of all, everybody who's in my corner, who's really close to me, they're like my family, you know. I try to keep distance with people who are not close to me. Like if you say, if you see this, my brother Amma, for example, he came straight from Morocco, straight from the airport to the commentary to, to be the translator today. My brother is 24 seven with me. Faraz Sahabi is also a brother like this. And you know, I, he's really close to my heart. He's not just my head coach, you know. And uh, it was just funny, you know. We just played around. I went for the leg lock because he likes leg locks and yeah, we enjoy the moment. Do you feel like making your fights almost like a family affair does it make Everything a little easier, a little, you know, more relaxed, there's not as much tension if you have your brother, everybody's close, it makes it 100%, only as a team you are strong, you know, everybody, you cannot be the, the, the guy who, who, the lone wolf, you know, it doesn't work in this game, the competition is so strong, you know, and if you have a family, the, like, if you have a team, it's like family, you know, it gives a different feeling. <coughs> I have my brother, I have George St. Pierre, Firas Abi in the back, you know, they pumping me, this was just amazing feeling, then I walk in, I see all the fans, you know, then I see my brother Oman, he's a the commentary, this, this was funny because he's a fighter himself, he fights Abu Dhabi, you know. And I see these guys, man, this gives me such a great energy and uh, gives you a lot of confidence. There's not a lot of fighters in the UFC that have like a Moroccan or German background. How big is and important is it to, to represent those kind of things? Actually, my background is Afghanistan and we try <laughs> to put our countries on the map, you know, because our countries, they don't have this spotlight and the sport. And, I try to represent uh, Germany and Afghanistan, you know, I have the Afghan flag to give a little bit hope to these kids, you know, and yeah, we try to bring the UFC next year back to Germany. Between the first and the second round, uh, I noticed you guys laughed like someone told you a joke. Do you mind sharing what made you laugh in between? For me, fighting is not like most of people think about fighting, like go in, nervous, this, that. I love this so much. I'm a fanboy of the sport, you know, so being in there, see all these things, you know, it, and knowing that I worked so hard, I did everything possible, nobody can work harder than me. Man, I sacrificed my life for this. And this gives me so much joy. I don't force something, you know, because I just love it so much. And I just enjoyed the moment, you know, this made me smiling and yeah. Did your coaches give you any advice between the rounds? Because two judges had it for you, one had it for him. Excuse me? Between rounds, did your coaches give you any advice? I mean, not that it mattered, but two judges had it for you, one had it for him. After yeah, the first yeah. The, the game plan was uh, simple. Just, Jack himself as a tough guy, a brawler, heavy punch, you know. We don't want to make it uh, look bad, the fight, just go in, try to brawl whoever falls first, you know. We have a really good game plan, just the first round was just analyzed, you know. Read his movements, my coach, they told me, just stay patient, you're much, you're on another level than him. But don't make a mistake, there's a Champions League, one mistake can cost you the fight. So, second round, I knew what's coming, his speed, I read everything, you know. I got used to it, then I took the momentum and, uh, yeah. What did uh, George say about your performance? George was so happy. Mm -hmm.
George is a really nervous guy between f and before the fight I was yeah. so happy I was smiling this and then George was like that's right man you're a psychopath how oh, you're so happy I said George I love it so much you guys you are my idols my brothers they're everybody here and th the only thing I can do is smile you know and he was really impressed you know and uh, George uh, thank thanks to them thanks for us they put so much time in us you know they invest so much time we're just two kids from Germany you know they took us like a family to invest so much time and uh, hopefully it's gonna gonna pay off soon yeah you, you had Faraz and GSP in your corner can it get any better than that? My opinion, this is the greatest uh, corner in MMA history, you know, the greatest fighter. The head coach for us, Abi, is such a genius, you know. He made GSP, he made Roe McDonald, and so humble, you know. Can't, can't describe, he's just uh, the best. And you only fought once in 2019, right? Yes, some injuries, some things, you know, but I tried to stay as active as possible. That's why I was asking, send me the next contract, Sean, you know. We train, we improve always. If he sent the contract, we have a new opponent, you know. Uh, this is a journey, we enjoy the journey. Yeah. So you'd like to fight again in 2019? Yeah, for I sure. Think, yeah. If I can, two, three times. If I can, can every weekend without the. Uh, sometimes my coach, they try to slow me down, you know, be, but because I'm so passionate about this, you know. Yeah. I love it so much. And yeah, let's see. So any card, any specific time frame you'd like to return in? <clears throat> October, November, let's see. Mm -hmm. I mean, like if the UFC can make the McDessie yeah. fight happen, we are supposed to fight, you know. I got injured, I pulled off, so it was my fault. If you can make it happen, it would be nice. Yeah, and um, he, he used to train at TriStar, right? Exactly, yeah, mistaken. we train together. Yeah. It's not beef, it's not like something. Of course, social media, we tried to heat up a little bit before a fight. Then I, after he won, I called him out again, you know. He took it on the wrong way. Man, it's a sport, you know. As long as they don't uh, talk shit about your family, your religion, this is this is the limit, you know. Then just take it as a sportsman, love, love about it. We tried to hype a fight. I think he pulled out also from his fight in August. Uh, like maybe you can make it October, November. November, Madison Square Garden, maybe he lives in Montreal. I train in Montreal, so it's close. Yeah, man. When you're training at TriStar, are you staying at the fighter dorms? Oh, thank God not, man. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about the dorms, but 2016, first time I went there, it was a good experience, I say. Now, uh, the circumstances changed a little bit. For us, but, that they're luxury now. They, they are much better than before. I didn't went there the last three years. I just went there once. Maybe they are better. But to be honest, everything is good experience, man. Even if you live on the street for a week, you're going to have experience, you know, for the rest of your life. So, but the fire domes, they are special. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we're finished here? Yeah. Hey, listen. Enjoy the moment <laughs> after the party. <laughs> we have also brownie. Nice, very good. Brownie, brownie. Look at the 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 brownie